We've seen a lot of cartoon reboots in the recent years, most of which have been critically blasted for being low effort cash grabs that often miss what made the original show so great. The 2017 DuckTales reboot is a very notable exception to this. In addition to being a love letter to the entire Disney afternoon programming block, it was praised for delivering an enjoyable modern take on the classic show with engaging storylines, a good sense of humor, and of course, an expansive cast of memorable characters. But who of these characters are the most good and which ones are truly the most villainous? That's what we're here to figure out today. I'm Caleb with Wicked Binge and this is DuckTales 2017 characters good to evil. As usual, we'll be starting with the most noble characters and working our way down. These characters are the good. Our gold medal goes to the most well-known character on the list, Donald Duck. You wouldn't expect a character known for his anger issues to be the most good, but Donald fits the bill perfectly. After his sister was lost in space due to an adventure gone wrong, he raised her kids on his own for 10 whole years before reconnecting with Scrooge. Sure, Donald doesn't like adventuring much, is a bit overprotective of the boys, and distrusts Scrooge to an extent, but all of those traits are understandable considering what happened to Della. Plus, once the boys show that they can handle themselves on an adventure, Donald agrees to let them adventure with Scrooge even if he isn't super comfortable with it. The closest thing to a villainous role Donald had was in the episode Quack Pack where the gang gets stuck in a sitcom due to a wish Donald made. But even then, Donald didn't know he was using a genie's lamp and he willingly put things back to normal once everyone made it clear that they didn't like that new life despite it being what Donald always wanted. Is it too much to ask to have my family be like other families? He may not be perfect, but he tries to be the best parent he can be and is willing to do what's right even when it goes against his own preferences. Our silver medal of good goes to Fenton Crackshell Cabrera. He starts off working as an intern for Gyro, and despite his boss's cold demeanor towards him, Fenton maintains an optimistic attitude, constantly wanting to push the boundaries of science. This enthusiasm can be a downside though, as it led to Gyro's secret projects being leaked to the public and stolen by Mark Beeks on numerous occasions. He stole my technology! Of course, this trusting nature has its perks as well, as his willingness to work with Gondra D gave her a second chance no one else would. And this is all without talking about his superhero alter ego, Gizmoduck. Using a robotic suit of armor from Gyro's lab, Fenn becomes Gizmoduck and uses the suit to fight crime. While he has trouble controlling it at times, he's done a lot of good hero work and it's made clear that he isn't in it for the glory and just wants to help people. We're going to be ranking Webby Vanderquack next. Following in the recent trend of quirky and action-oriented girl characters, Webby is enthusiastic and friendly while at the same time always being up for an adventure. I'm gonna see the world. I'm gonna be an explorer! She's also often described as both the heart and the fists of the team. Being the closest friend of the triplets, Webby will sometimes act as either a voice of reason or a voice of encouragement. She also does this with her other best friend, Lena, and is incredibly protective of her. Sometimes, however, she can be somewhat overbearing and intense. Even with minor things like games, Webby will often go all out, leading to mixed results. Webby is also a huge fan of the McDuck clan and tries to learn all she can about the McDuck family. Thankfully though, her being a fan of Scrooge and his family doesn't completely blind her to Scrooge's faults, meaning that she isn't afraid to call him out for his mistakes. Really, other than sometimes being overly excitable and intense, Webby manages to be a good kid and a great asset to the Duck family. Next is Dewey. Much like the others, Dewey is kind and well-meaning, but above all else, he loves being the center of attention, which can come in handy or be a liability depending on the situation. He's able to put his ego aside when the situation calls for it though. Most notably in the Rumble for Ragnarok, where he's willing to go up against Jormungandr despite the crowd hating him for it. I don't care, but you do. His most notable moral act was when he was looking for clues about his mother's disappearance. Dewey kept this secret from his brothers so they wouldn't have to deal with the emotional toll of the journey even though keeping the secret made things harder for him. This sacrifice didn't make a whole lot of sense as Huey and Louie obviously wouldn't want to be kept in the dark about something like this. And that sums up a good deal of his personality, well-meaning but doesn't always think things through. Next up is Huey Duck. 
Huey is easily the most responsible of the triplets. He tries to do everything by the book, which is good for keeping everyone out of trouble, but also backfires whenever something goes wrong. He doesn't know how to improvise, so whenever he's put in a situation he doesn't know how to handle, he usually freaks out. Next up is the boy's mother, Della Duck. In some ways, she's the exact opposite of Donald. While he likes to play things safe, Della is much more reckless. She clearly wants to be a good parent to the boys, but she makes some mistakes due to a lack of experience, like not disciplining Louie until things got completely out of control in Time Foon. But even then, she did learn her lesson. You are grounded. No schemes, no treasures. She could also be described as aggressively friendly, trying her best to befriend Penumbra on the moon when Penumbra wasn't exactly nice to her. In fact, she was so grateful to the Moonlanders for taking her in, she made sure to give them blueprints to build the rockets so they could join her back on Earth. If that's not gratitude, we're not sure what is. When she's first introduced, Penumbra doesn't seem like the nicest of people. She's immediately suspicious of Della simply because she's from the Earth and even suggests sacrificing her to a moon might. She is squishy and easily defeatable if you would just let me. However, after seeing that Della was honest about wanting to bring everyone to Earth, she changes her mind. She also heroically pushes back against Lunaris's lies and even tries to sabotage the rockets in an attempt to prevent the invasion of Earth. This didn't work, but she still gave an important transmission warning everyone on Earth about the invasion. Next is Violet Sawbrewing. There isn't a whole lot to say about Violet. She's smart and speaks in a very cold, intellectual manner. Tulpas are manifestations of powerful emotions. Despite this, she's still good friends with Webby and Lena and helps them get out of a number of bad situations. Now for the family's pilot, Launchpad McQuack. Launchpad is the definition of dumb, but well-meaning. He always keeps a positive attitude and has a strong loyalty towards Scrooge. I sunk a helicopter in a wave pool once. He cares deeply about those around him and tries to do what he thinks will make them the happiest, as shown when he tried not to make things awkward for Penumbra when their date didn't go well or how he desperately wanted to prove himself to Dewey and help him win a VR game. The only flaw Launchpad has is his lack of intelligence, which isn't a moral failing for the most part, but things like his tendency to crash planes makes him a bit of a danger to the McDuck family even though he doesn't mean to be. Some of you may be surprised to see Bentina Beakley this far down on the list, but we have a good reason. She does have a strong record of heroism. She served as an agent for Shush, and after finding her on a mission, she took Webby and raised her as her own granddaughter. However, this is where we have to dock her points. Just because she cares deeply about Webby doesn't mean she's a good parent to her. I will not allow my granddaughter to be a pawn. Sure, Della and Donald made mistakes, but they were understandable mistakes. What on earth made Beakley think that keeping Webby cooped up in McDuck Manor for most of her life was a good idea? Yeah, it was for her own protection, and Beakley did have a good reason to fear people would come for Webby since she was created by Fowl, but isolating her from the outside world was not the right way to handle it. Rounding out our good category, we have Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge is the epitome of a gritty but hardworking businessman. Sure, he revels in all the money and treasure he's accumulated, but he earned that money through his own hard work and willingness to take risks. But I worked hard to perfect that skill. This manifests both in the adventures he goes on and the people he hires. He's willing to give funding to unconventional talent like Gyro despite some of the problems his inventions cause because he believes in Gyro's talent. He's a strong believer in working hard for what you get, which has its upsides, like when he was willing to give up his newfound youth and return it to the victims in the Forbidden Fountain of the Forever Glades, partially because he takes pride in how hard he worked to stay alive this long. However, this belief causes a lot of problems too. One of the more egregious examples is when he stiffed Duke Baloney, causing him to become Scrooge's greatest enemy. It doesn't matter what lesson he was trying to teach, he still underpaid this kid for his labor. Plus, there's the time he almost ruined Christmas because he didn't like the idea of kids being given free toys instead of something more practical. And his stubbornness and recklessness can put the family in danger at times. These examples made it tempting to put him in the gray area. But then there's the spear of Selene. 
When Della got lost in space, he used every resource he had at his disposal to try and find her, draining his money bin and only stopping when his board of directors forced him to because he was going to bankrupt the company. That willingness to sacrifice his precious fortune to save those he cares about meant we had to put him in the good category. So putting him at the bottom is more of a compromise. Now on to the gray area. These are characters who have plenty of good in them but have done a good deal of evil as well. Our first character is probably the one we know the least about, Manny. He started off as an ancient beast sitting in Scrooge's garage and attacked the kids once he was awakened. However, after a stone replica of Scrooge's head lands on top of him, he calms down and becomes Gyro's lab assistant for the rest of the series, mostly just doing his job. That is, until the last adventure, where it is revealed he is the headless manhorse of the apocalypse destined to bring about the end of the world. However, Manny insists that he's put that prophecy behind him and wants to live a normal life. I just want to be a normal guy with a normal life. Renouncing a destiny like that is certainly admirable, which is why he's near the top, but since he barely does anything in the show, he still belongs in the gray area. From the lab assistant to the inventor, we have Gyro. Now on the surface, Gyro doesn't seem like the nicest guy. He's short-tempered and arrogant, and he doesn't treat Fenton the best, often belittling him and even making him use a toilet stall as his office because he has so little respect for his work. Although in Gyro's defense, Fenton's tendency to leak Gyro's inventions is a legitimate reason to look down on him. So, how did you keep Bulb Tech from going bad? However, as the series progresses, Gyro starts to respect Fenton more and more. Also, while Gyro's inventions have a tendency to turn evil, it's made abundantly clear this is unintentional. And despite the great pride and love Gyro has for his inventions, he knows when to shut them down if they're going to cause some serious damage. Now for the last of the triplets, we have Louie. The boys acknowledge in the first episode, Louie is the evil twin. Yeah, that's a bit of an overstatement. Louie isn't outright evil, but compared to his brothers, he's certainly underhanded. Rather than being interested in adventure for the fun of it, he prefers to focus on sleazy get-rich-quick schemes that range from manipulative to outright dangerous. This one's three months old anyway. Who cares? We're rich! Some of the most notable ones include when he used the time tub to steal lost treasures the moment they became lost, which nearly tore apart the space-time continuum, the multiple times he attempted to con Doofus Drake into a friendship in an attempt to get a piece of his fortune, and of course the time he was so mad about being grounded that he teamed up with Flintheart Glomgold to steal the family business. Louis takes pride in his manipulative tendencies, but he's also able to recognize when he's gone too far, like with the aforementioned Time Tub and stealing McDuck Enterprises. And there are plenty of times he's used his shady tactics for good, like defending Scrooge in the life and crimes of Scrooge McDuck. Lena is a difficult character to rank. On one hand, her friendship with Webby was initially a lie designed to get close to the McDuck family and steal Scrooge's number one dime, releasing Magicia and letting her shadows overrun Duckburg. However, she had a pretty good reason to do this, as it would mean she would be able to get away from Magicia's constant torment. However, in spite of this, she warms up to Webby, rejects her mission, and attempts to warn Scrooge before Magicia finally takes her over. Even then, she tried to look out for Webby as a shadow before being brought back. So yeah, she may have started out as just a desperate teen trying to get away from an evil sorceress, but she learned the true meaning of friendship and became a hero in the process. Gondra D is a character who's often in a league with the villains, whether it's Mark Beaks or Fowl. But as we learn more about her, it's made clear this isn't by choice. She loves to push the boundaries of science, but not all of her ideas are safe, so she has trouble getting funding. She just works for villains because they're the only ones willing to hire her. When Fenton offers to work with her, she happily accepts and steals from Fowl to help build the Gizmo Cloud, which would allow anyone to develop their own inventions in a danger-free environment. It's why I ended up having to experiment on myself. While that obviously furthers her own goals, it also benefits an entire generation of inventors. Her willingness to betray an organization as ruthless as Fowl is courageous, and both of these factors are enough to save her from the evil category. Finally, rounding out the gray area, we have Goldie O'Gilt. 
It would take a truly cunning adventure to rival Scrooge McDuck, and Goldie O'Gilt fits the bill perfectly. Scrooge and Goldie have done plenty to sabotage each other in their adventures, but Goldie is clearly the more underhanded of the two. While Scrooge prides himself on hard work, Goldie is content to swindle others out of their riches. Sorry, Scrooge, but the Golden Lagoon is mine. However, despite her manipulations, Goldie never does anything that could be considered outright evil, and even sacrifices her youth to save Scrooge in the Forbidden Fountain of the Foreverglades. And with that, we move on to the bad and the evil. This is pretty self-explanatory. These are the villains of the show who have little, if anything, redeemable about them. Starting with the most sympathetic of the bunch, we have Phantom Blot. Unlike most other foul agents who are largely just greedy criminals, Phantom Blot has a pretty good reason for doing what he does. He used to live in a village that was terrorized by Magicia Dispel. Despite being given many gifts in exchange for not destroying the village, Magicia got tired of the praise and destroyed it anyway. Phantom Blot swore revenge on Magicia and, to an extent, magic as a whole, and he created a gauntlet that could steal magic from others. He also had a soft side, eventually growing a bond with his partner, and it's hard to hold him accountable for everything Fowl did, because Bradford never told anyone how far his true ambitions went. Even still, Phantom Blot's hatred of magic is downright fanatical, wishing to see all of it destroyed despite it doing plenty of good and despite many innocent magic users who would be hurt in the process. Next is Doofus Drake. He was once an ordinary kid, but after his grandma died and named him the sole heir to her massive fortune, he went crazy. With more money than any kid could imagine at his disposal, he became a socially stunted menace who treated everyone around him, even his own parents, as mere possessions. Despite how much of a monster he is, he ranks lower on the list for a few reasons. For starters, most of the people he torments are only vulnerable to him because they want some of his money. So? Many liars! Also, while he remains an entitled brat the whole way through, he does seem to grow as a person after some of his power is stripped from him by Boyd. In the episode The Life and Crimes of Scrooge McDuck, Doofus gathers Scrooge's greatest enemies for a lawsuit in Celestial Court as a way to get back at Louis for robbing him of half his inheritance. However, after Louis apologizes for this, Doofus accepts and drops the case, which is much more mature than anything we had seen of him previously. It doesn't make up for all the other stuff he did, but it does give us some hope he could grow up to at least be somewhat less terrible. Mark Beeks is your quintessential San Francisco tech executive. Eccentric, constantly on his phone, and deeply concerned with trending on social media. All the new inventions he releases might make him seem like a genius, but in reality, he's a complete fraud. His entire company is built on selling technology he stole from other people. He takes particular interest in Fenton's inventions like the Gizmo Cloud and Gizmo Duck Armor. Ah. Thanks for the suit, brah. However, as bad and widespread as Beak's plagiarism is, that's usually all it is, occasionally accompanied by violence to get his hands on the tech he wants. It's still pretty bad, but it's pretty tame compared to the villains further down the list. This is going to be a bit of a shock, but we're putting Flinthard Glomgold next. Ever since Scrooge underpaid him for a shoeshine, Glomgold vowed to outdo him and become the richest duck in the world. He's the most frequent villain in the show, is endlessly petty, and many of his plans involve murdering Scrooge. So if he's Scrooge's main enemy, why isn't he any higher? That's just it, he's Scrooge's enemy. While being willing to kill someone is obviously terrible, Glomgold's villainy is only limited to Scrooge. He never actively tries to harm anyone else, aside from the one time he tried to get rid of Mark Beeks. Leave the devious planning to the professionals! Plus, while he had just as much of an incentive to do this as anyone else, Glomgold was instrumental in stopping Lunaris' invasion of Earth. Even if you're doing it for completely selfish reasons, saving an entire planet is still an admirable feat, and if it weren't for Glomgold, Lunaris likely would have won. Don Carnage is certainly an odd villain. He's a pirate in the sky who steals from other planes while he and his crew put on musical theater performances. It's kind of tough to take this guy seriously, as not only was he overthrown by a child, but after that he kind of fades into the background until joining Fowl at the last minute. Let's face it, when your archenemy is Dewey Duck, you're probably a bigger joke than Glomgold. 
Ma Beagle is the leader of the Beagle Boys, a gang that frequently terrorizes Duckburg and tries to rob Scrooge. Now at first, it may seem like she has a sympathetic motive for doing this, as her family used to own Duckburg until Scrooge came along. However, that falls apart when you learn that he won it as part of a bet against her family, and the only reason he won because he saw through the dirty tricks her father was using to cheat. Plus, Ma Beagle had the heart of a criminal even from a young age, and despite being a mother figure for the Beagle Boys, she treats them pretty terribly, often berating them for their incompetence. The only reason she isn't higher is that her thieving ambitions are mostly limited to Duckburg. Unlike our next character, John D. Rockertuck. He's an agent for Fowl, but his actions there aren't particularly noteworthy as he doesn't do anything that good or evil compared to the other members. His placement is largely based on his original appearance, where he would swindle small towns into handing their deeds over to him with the promise that he would bring them newfound wealth. And all I ask for in return is the right to drill a teeny hole in- In reality, this scheme only enriched him and destroyed many small towns. Now for one of the founding members of Fowl, we have Black Heron. She serves as Bradford's right hand, and her motivations are pretty simple. She agrees with Fowl's stated goal, wanting to steal the world. This is the beginning of a beautiful fiendship. She typically ignores Bradford's justifications for their goals and just wants to act like a typical villain as shown by her adding the word fiendish to the group's acronym and being more theatrical with her villainy much to Bradford's chagrin. On to another foul agent, we have Steelbeak. The main thing that stands out about Steelbeak is how little we know about him. Every other member of Fowl has episodes in previous seasons introducing them, or at least a backstory, but not Steelbeak. He's a brute and he's really dumb, but not so dumb that he doesn't understand what he's doing is wrong. There is a smart rat ray. Why didn't you just say that? In fact, when he gives his own intelligence an upgrade in the finale, we see just how cruel he can be, turning many of the prisoners into mindless slaves. All right, now for our top three, all of whom just so happen to be the three major villains of each season. Our bronze medal of evil goes to Lunaris. When he's first introduced, Lunaris seems like a nice guy, taking in Della and helping her return home. However, his true colors are revealed once she's gone. Using the fact she left early and the plan she left behind, he devised a plan to invade and conquer Earth. This plan includes lying to his people, imprisoning Donald, and attempting to target the boys because doing so would make Scrooge grief-stricken and vulnerable. So yeah, Lunaris is really underhanded and trying to conquer an entire planet is pretty bad. The only thing saving him from the top two is that we don't actually know how he would rule Earth. Yes, he was dishonest, but the fact that the Moonlanders were willing to follow him indicates he might have been a decent leader. Still doesn't justify anything, but we actually know what the top two would do when they win, and it's pretty grim. They say the road to hell is paved with good intentions, and no one in this show embodies this saying better than the winner of our silver medal of evil, Bradford Buzzard. On the surface, his motivations for starting foul are not only sympathetic, they're arguably noble. He saw all the chaos generated by adventures like the one Scrooge went on and saw it as a danger to the world, which he isn't entirely wrong about considering things like Lunaris' invasion of Earth and Taurus Bulba almost tearing apart reality. However, his methods for achieving this end are what put him at this spot. For starters, he's the one who told Della about the Spear of Selene knowing she'd use it and wind up lost in space, and as a result, Scrooge would isolate himself and stop adventuring. How do you think Della found out you built the Spear of Selene? Then of course, there's his master plan, which involved gathering everyone he considered chaotic and removing them from reality using the Soul Goal circuit in order to force Scrooge to sign away his right to go on adventures. He embraces his villainous side so much, he almost throws Donald into the vortex despite Scrooge complying with his demands and even tosses in Black Heron. These methods reveal his true motivations as well. At the end of the day, his plan was never about safety. In fact, the incidents he cites as his motivation in Let's Get Dangerous were all kind of his fault, albeit indirectly. In truth, he just hated the very concept of adventuring and wanted to impose his anti-adventuring beliefs on everyone else, regardless of what it would take to achieve that goal. 
Finally, our gold medal of evil goes to Magesha Dispel. We see her do plenty of evil throughout this series, mainly manipulating Lena on a constant basis before absorbing her once she outlived her usefulness and sending her shadow army across Duckburg when she's released. But those events are just the tip of the iceberg. What earns her our gold medal is what she did before being trapped in Scrooge's number one dime. To my most hated nemesis. That's you. She would terrorize entire towns for her own amusement. Regardless of what they did to appease her, they would all face her wrath eventually. Imagine the petulant nature and complete disregard for others of Doofus Drake coupled with powerful magic allowing the user to torment anyone in any way they saw fit and you have Magicia Dispel. And unlike Doofus, there's nothing to redeem her either. There's not much else to say. Her actions speak for themselves. Anyway, now it's time to hand out the medals. The Darwin Medal goes to Launchpad for being the idiot of the group and not knowing how to fly a plane without crashing despite being a pilot. The Slow Off Medal goes to Mark Beeks, who can't be bothered to invent something of his own. The Envy Medal goes to Glomgold for dedicating his entire life to outdoing one person. The Wrath Medal also goes to Glomgold for constantly trying to kill that person. The Lust Medal goes to Goldie Oglit, since she often uses her feminine charms to swindle people out of their possessions. The Gluttony Medal goes to Doofus Drake for spending his grandma's fortune on any random item or activity he can think of before losing interest in it almost instantly. The Pride Medal goes to Scrooge for his over-the-top but largely earned ego. And the Greed Medal actually goes to Bradford Buzzard. Yeah, Scrooge is the one with the giant swimming pool of money, but Bradford is the one constantly telling him not to spend it and is financially rewarded for doing so. Plus, you know, he was trying to steal the whole world. That's pretty greedy. So that's our list. Do you agree with our rankings? Be sure to let us know in the comments and check out our Good to Evil playlist where we rank the morality of characters in your favorite TV shows and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.